गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी आर डिलाइटेड टू हैव यू अगेन एट अनदर पास्टर्स कॉर्नर दिस ब्यूटीफुल ट्यूसडे मॉर्निंग वी आर वी आर हियर अगेन एंड एज एज यूजुअल वी वी आर हियर विद um persons who we believe and know can can give a good account of themselves and and clarify your thoughts some of the misconceptions you have give you further information um we are just delighted to be here with you again this um Tuesday morning for another pastor's corner and this morning we are looking at christian and and a culture and the christian culture and the christian and i'm quite sure that we would have a, a wonderful time um with me this morning on pastor's corner uh, two distinguished gentlemen who are no stranger to pastor's corner as well um to my immediate left we have pastor jerom gordon pastor jerom gordon is a pastor for the southern district and to my extreme left is pastor marlon panchu who is a pastor for the southwestern district Um gentlemen good morning and welcome to pastor's corner Good morning Father Richard I'm totally delighted to be hearing this new one this uh new audio uh our new idea on this very topical issue in the soul today Good morning everyone again it's a pleasure to be with you look forward to a very um fruitful discussion and of course um the topic is one very interesting i must say so look forward to sharing the time with you wonderful so we getting ready to go right into it but before we do that let's um just have a word of prayer father we thank you for this blessed tuesday morning where we can again come in this um program the pastor's corner as we have been doing before it's another topical issue we will be discussing we pray for all our listeners and viewers wherever they are and those who are have not yet tuned in we pray lord that they would tune in just in time to be part of this very exciting program culture and the christian so bless our sitting here this morning we pray in jesus name so those of you already on or already a number of our regular viewers and listeners are already on good morning um sister veronica good morning brenda good morning sister Stedlin and all the others um we happy that you are already there so please like the page and share the page and let your friends know that the pastors are there again to discuss another wonderful subject um culture and the christian we have pastor jerome gordon we have pastor malon panchu here with us and i'm quite sure we will await your comments and your questions so we getting right into we getting right into it this morning good morning susan good morning ken um yeah you just you just log in on and we just let others know that the pastors are there already culture we we i think we if, if we should go any further we should have a good idea as to what we are talking about so let let's have a definition or two as culture and the christian what is culture pastor banjo i think you 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 are ready to respond what is culture um the definition sake um you know I, cho- i choose to use uh, work with the simplest that i could think of which is culture being the way of life of a people um this will include all of the norms the values that they hold um talk about the language and all you know the other aspect of it um so it's really a, a totality of the people and the way of living so culture itself embraces all aspect of that of of that people or that group language the norms the values um all of those things that they hold dear to themselves okay the way of life uh, that's quite interesting um term the way of life of a, of a of a people you know um pastor god you 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 have something to add some to Uh, 
that characterize a particular people group at a particular time. And I say it with time specificity because there are times when cultures evolve. So uh, culture is what it is at a particular time and place among a particular people group. Okay. Um, maybe I should then ask, um, because the, 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 the caption for today's um, presentation is culture and the Christian. So you've given a, um, you both have given definition of, a definition of culture, the way of life of the people. Uh, is, is there something called the Christian culture? Uh, Mr. Chairman, before you go any further, the, some viewers are saying that they're not hearing me, that my mic is not working. Two persons said that, so uh, you could fix it up. Yeah, back to you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, so not sure. The technician will help us there. But um, <clears throat> let's, um, yeah, so I was asking, is there, is there something called the Christian culture? Because Pastor Panchu, piggybacking on what he just said, one of the phrases in, in your um, definition is that the way of life of a group of people, um, you know, the way of life, the norms, the values, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and we, we were talking about the culture and the Christian. Um, is there a Christian culture or a Christian subculture? Pastor God. Well, Mr. Moderator, yes, I would agree with you. Because the, the very fact that you use the adjective Christian, that immediately puts the spotlight on those values that would identify a person as a Christian in contradistinction to a Hindu, a Muslim, um, a, 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 a Zionist, or whatever. So, yes, there is a particular set of values and mores and norms that are characteristically Christian in nature. So there is such a thing as a Christian culture. Okay, quite interesting. So there is something called a Christian culture. Pastor Pancho, you agree? Um, I, I have to agree, and even more so to, um, for the sake that when you consider the Christian culture, um, it is still a subculture in, in and of itself. So for example, I might be identified as a Grenadian. There are certain things that are unique to Grenadians. Um, we may talk about even food, we talk about our oil and things like that. Um, that we hold dear to ourselves, but I'm also a Christian. But the, I think the separation here and, and the distinction we must make is that as a Christian, the things that I choose, the way that I behave, the values that I hold, the language that I use, all must first be determined by my Christian values and not by my historical heritage. So in other words, I identify as Christian first and then Grenadian. Oh, quite, 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 quite interesting, Pastor. <laughs> That's quite interesting. That's quite in rather interesting. You're saying that because you know um, we there's there's a term, a phrase that we, we use, country fuss. You, you know, country fuss. You 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 Grenadian. We, we pay homage to the flags. For example, you, if you have some function, we have the Seven Adventist flag flying, or, or or the church flag is flying. But once the the national flag is is, is there, then Precedents, everything. I mean, is the national flag then everything else? Yeah, but 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 so and that that that's that's in the in the in the realms of you know the any any function. But you're saying as you, as as it relates to lifestyle, the nationality or the the the, the culture of the national falls secondarily to to that of the the, the values and principles of. Of, of the person um, who's a Christian. That's, you, that's what you're saying. Um, yes, and, and that's a very, important, a very important distinction to make. And the reason for that distinction is that we are not of this world. And I think maybe later in the program, you may look at it closer in, in that respect. But more so to that we are called from darkness into the marvelous light of God. And so as Christians, even though we're part of a society, what is given precedent first is our Christianity as opposed to the norms of that particular society. Okay, okay. So I, I think we, we'll, I think we that was important to, to to settle in, in our thoughts and thinking, even as we go forward. Pastor Gordon, welcome. We welcome in um, Desmond from from Jamaica. I don't like how you say it, man. You should say big up Desmond. Big up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so we're picking up this one. Lambert, he, he, he likes to tell us exactly where he's, where, where he's um, which part of Jamaica is. He, he doesn't like to say from Jamaica. He, he Yes, he, he gives us, what's it there? Ocho Rios. Ocho Rios. Yes, yes, he likes to tell us the details of where he's coming from. Have mercy. So let, let's, um, let's get into it. Um, you know, gentlemen, there are some who contend that culture is an expression of the inner self, one's inner self. The creativity the creativity given to us by the creator and therefore should be fully embraced by both Christians and non-Christians alike. Do you subscribe to this view? The view that um, culture is an expression of our inner self. We, we didn't create ourselves. We were created by the man above. He gave us certain um, expressions which, which we consider to be culture. And therefore, you're Christian, you're non-Christian, it doesn't matter. You should embrace it because it came from the hand of the Creator. Um, do, you, do you subscribe to that view? Well, I do subscribe that creativity is uh, one of those features that indicate we were, we were created in God's image. So we share some of God's attributes, uh, like, like creativity. We can, we can conceptualize we can be innovative, we can do, do stuff. So if one considers one's expression of talent in the arts, for example, um, in, in music, as, as cultural expressions, then that's fine to the extent that the expression is, is governed and restricted and contextualized biblically. Because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that not everything that I express creatively is good, it's biblical. I mean, a man could steal some things. Uh, an ATM machine was robbed once in a certain country with ingenuity and creativity. You know, so the expression of your creative genius doesn't have to be good. But to the extent that it becomes a blessing to humanity and those in your culture, fine. It can be accepted, and I'm in total agreement that such an expression of culture is something laudable. Okay, so so the the person who who um stole from the ATM machine that creativity um was wrongly expressed, you say. <laughs> well, we can't deny it was creativity. I mean the way it was done, it was a remarkable creativity and foresight that went into that. So merely to justify something on the basis that is a creative expression, to me we can't do that. We have to justify something based on how much it lines up with the Christian values and the word of God. All right, so we're coming back to that, that the Christian values, Pastor Pancho. And, and here we are again, uh, because it, it's one thing with our culture is that sometimes I think we make excuses uh, for ourselves. Um, God has called us a very distinctive way of living, and persons use the, the aspect of creativity, um, having an innate ability to express oneself creatively um, as justification for behavior. But we all know that um, our behavior is really shaped by the norms of, of, of the society that surround us. So each one of us, we are born into a particular group, and we are taught, um, we are educated a particular way. And so those are the things that really greatly uh, influence us. In other words, our, the whole socialization of the individual is where the main expression comes from. And so as much as we are born with creativity, um, it is shown that our behavior, the way we express ourselves, is really a total uh, uh, of the group that we are born into. And the more you interact with people from different places, the more that you know, it appears even great to you that it's the group that you belong to. Um, I grew up in St. Andrews, in, from, um, right here in Granville. If I go in St. George's, certain expression we use in Granville, in St. George's they don't use it. You know, so it, it's really about the group you're born into as, as much as that will create that uh, level of creativity as opposed to being born with it. And okay, well, God gave me this creativity, and as Pastor Gordon said, then I'll go and, I'll go and do this, I wind down the place, I jam down the place, because God has given me that creativity. I believe it's more on the group that we are born into. We are educated a particular way. Okay. So we, 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 we're getting that. Um, I think we, we, we're making some headway. Um, notwithstanding, based on what we just said, that even what the Creator has given to you, we have to express it in a way that is then pleasing to the Creator. Amen. Because we have our own choices, 
um, and we can be given something, but in our demonstration, our expression of what we have been given, we can do so um, differently. You know, individuals can do that differently. And therefore, not, not because we have been given something, we just embrace it and, and, and use that as the excuse to do whatever we want. You know, <laughs> but as Pastor God does say, you know, someone coming up with such creativity to um, defraud an ATM machine, obviously, knowledge comes from God. But, but, but God doesn't want us to, to use the knowledge to go and commit fraud, you know? Um, so I, I think that's, that was very well said. Um, we, we're moving on. Um, so there is a passage here I would like to read. It comes from John 17, 14 to 16. Um, but before I read it, I'll ask the question. Can we say that Christianity is against culture or Chris, should Christianity be against culture? But um, before you answer, I'm going to read the text. But keep that in mind. Should Christianity be against culture? I'm going to read John 17, verses 14, 14 to 16. Um, and I read, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. I pray that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. And verse 16 says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Should Christianity be against culture? Is the text suggesting that? Well, you know, that's a very beautiful text because it makes a distinction between the subculture of the Christian and the general culture at the general cultural context within the Christian lives and operates. So Jesus is saying that um, we are not to be um, insensitive to the larger culture, but there must be a qualitative distinction in terms of our lifestyle between what we display as our culture and what is in the general culture around us. So is Christianity against culture? The answer is uh, no. Christianity is against cultural elements that are inimical to that which is good, biblical, and Christ-like. So Jesus says that we, in that text, Jesus says that he's asking the Father to keep us in a culture. And I, I wonder, um, Pastor Moderator, if um, Christ was, was looking at um, a, a culture of gender fluidity, a culture where... Um, um, as I heard this morning, driving up the, the, the through the rainforest, that there are universities now that are concerned that transgender um, women are now being placed to compete in races that are made for or designed for biological women. So a transgender woman is a man, and with different muscular muscle distribution and so on. Uh, the question is: Is it possible Jesus was? looking down through the corridors of time and seeing some of these things and saying to us as the Christians, what, are, what you are supposed to do, be a part of the world, I mean, be in the world, but definitely remain true to your biblical values. Okay, wonderful. Pastor Banchu. Um, I'm in agreement um, with Pastor Gordon, and I'm, I'm seeing some of the viewers, and, you know, um, I, I'm also in agreement with them, Sister Thomas, Sister Stephen, you know, um, our creativity should be guided by our Christian values. I said once it doesn't align with the word of God, it should be against it. And I think that's the prayer Jesus has for us also. You know, he, he didn't want it, the disciples to necessarily be removed from the world, but that they should not lose themselves. Um, being in the world, we are still distinctly Christian, and our values are guided by what the Bible says. And when God supports it, we do it. If the word of God doesn't support it, even though it's part of the culture, we, we don't. And I think that's what makes us distinctly different in that sense. But at the same time, it creates controversy because it therefore it also puts upon us a responsibility that to leave us Christian, it means that we're going to have to speak out against things that are contrary to our Christian values. Okay, and I think that's where, um, <coughs> I think that's where the confusion comes very often. Persons who um, are saying, "Well, you Christians." We, we, I mean, we, I think we'll come to that. But you, you Christians um, seems to be against everything that is Grenadian, you know. 
because we are one people and we are expressing ourselves that way, but you all don't want to come to this and, you know, um, I think that's where the dichotomy comes in. They, 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 you know, um, thinking that we have to be on the same page because we are all one people and therefore we have to, we should express ourselves the same way. But I think what some of our um, viewers and you've said, both of you have said, um, I think that's, that's the confusion in thought for many persons, not realizing that there is a higher culture than the national culture. Uh, absolutely. Yes? And if I may, if I may quickly add, um, Pastor Isaac, the people will say this of Christians just about everywhere. In India, for example, there is a cultural, in certain sections of India, there is a cultural practice where you, you dig up the skull of your departed mother, punch a hole through it, and wear it around your neck as a form of protection as an expression of your love for your departed mother as well. Now, the, 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 Christian, the, the Christians who are Indians will not do that. There's, a, there's another section of Africa where it's culturally okay to have four or five wives, have one in every province and so on. And the Christian, they might say here again, Afri this is our culture in this, in, this, in, this, in this particular area. So it doesn't matter which country it is, there are always things about the culture that the Christians may deem to be um, not good enough, and they, were, they would now refer to the Christian as unpatriotic and not loving culture, not loving country, because you reject certain cultural elements that you feel are inimical to biblical values. Okay, um, wonderful. Let me just um, make a comment here. Our viewers and, and listeners, we have different topics every week, um, and if you're following us, you know that we address every, every week we have different topics. So, we would like you to be respectful and, and stay within the range of what we're discussing. So evidently, we are not discussing the vaccine today. Yes? We are not discussing the mark of the beast today. And therefore, we will not respond to questions about the vaccine or the mark of the beast. So thank you, and I hope you can respect that as we move along. We, we're discussing culture this morning. You see? We're discussing culture. We, can the church embrace culture, pastors? And, and without embracing the idols of the culture. Can the church, and I have a passage to read too, so probably, yeah, but, but can the church embrace culture without embracing the idols of the culture? And um, I, I want to read um, 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Yes? 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Um, it says, Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And verse 16 says, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Can Christians embrace culture, Pastor Pancho, without embracing the idols of the culture? I will say that we have to tread cautiously. Um, whenever the Bible gives advice as it has in, 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 in this particular uh, passage, I think it's something to take note of. Um, the truth of the matter is that the world, its heroes, whether sporting heroes, revolutionary heroes, they are all great men in their, in their particular field. But remember, for the Christian, his hero is Christ. If most of our, our time is spent watching our, you know, whether Ronaldo or Messi on football or or um, basketball, you know, um, LeBron James, or, you know, you could go on and on. These persons, as good as they are in their craft, if the time spent idolizing them, meaning the time given to your football matches or your cricket matches or basketball matches is more than the time you give Christ, they are idols. And that's why it's so important that we don't get caught up. Sometimes I think the, the, we have the feeling that we have to be a part of, and we sacrifice so much of our Christianity wanting to be a part of. Um, the Seventh-day Adventist Christian, distinctly so, have a lot of norms and values that we carry um, from the things that we eat. Um, we don't eat pork. Um, we don't eat the unclean foods like the, the, the manicure, the marijuana, and, um, the manicure and uh, the iguana, sorry. And that already is, is precious. Because people say, that's small things. Why are you wondering these little things? And then, you know, you are Grenadian. You, you should be eating this thing. You know, some people say if they have to eat, they're eating the noise and all. But the truth have is, mercy. the truth is we are Christians. And being a part of the world sometimes, idol, idolizing persons become a natural part of it. 
But as Christians, we have to remember that our hero is Christ. So our time, our energies, our talent should be in idolizing Christ and not the heroes of our culture. Okay, wonderful. Um, Pastor Gordon, can we embrace yeah. culture without <laughs> embracing the idols of the culture? I guess the, the word that we, we would single out is the idol. And uh, again, this, this would need to be defined. What do we mean by the idols of the country? Do we mean our athletic stars, for example? Um, do we mean um, our, our intellectual luminaries who have distinguished themselves in academia on the world stage? If by idols we mean those persons that are lauded and applauded because of their accomplishments in business, industry, or sports, then I think we can, as Christians, recognize the talents and sterling contributions of these people. But to spend a whole day debating and talking about who is better and whatever, to me, that is when we take it in the realm of idolizing them. We're you get up in the morning and you're following this tweet because of what was said about um, Kirani or whatever. Um, I mean, no disrespect, I'm not saying it pejoratively. But the point I'm making is that we have to be careful. It's okay to embrace the talented and the accomplished, but it's not okay to idolize them. And so if the general society, the general culture, idolizes these um, greats, then we have to be careful as Christians not to do it. So, yes, we can embrace the culture, but not, of course, idol the idols of the culture. Okay, and, uh, well, in another direction, um, not only referring to personalities, um, we have, you know, in these parts, the, the, the how we sing would not be like the Westerners, yeah? Um, another, an idol of our culture could be the Jab Jab, you see? Yes, they say 100,000 jab jab. We're all Grenadians. Everybody wants to be jab jab. The idol of the culture could be the thing that, not necessarily a person, but it could be what the, what, what, what the, 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 the nation or the people idolizes. Not necessarily a person. It could be a thing. Yeah? So we could be, yeah, so it doesn't have to be a person. But whatever we pay so, so much homage that we have to behave like that or have to, have to, function like that because we are that's 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 who we are yeah so um i agree with you it doesn't um be it person or thing we, we shouldn't we shouldn't um we shouldn't idolize the, yes and I, and I think um to, again you see the thing is that and i think that's sometimes what makes people think christianity is so unpopular because the christian responsibility is to be representative of the kingdom of god Let's put it another way, the kingdom of light. And as long as we keep embracing culture in and of itself, when that culture is contrary to, as we said, the values um, as ascribed to the word of God as God himself, then we are not being the light where people could find Jesus or could find hope or could see a distinction between us and the same culture we are talking about. So once we start embracing culture blindly, then we put ourselves subject to a lot of those things. So you say 100,000 jab jab? Um, even though we don't subscribe to it, uh, there are many people who embrace certain carnival practices as Christians, and that itself to me hide the testimony of Christ. And so we have to remain distinct, um, whether it's a practice, whether it's an individual, it doesn't really matter. Once it goes against the values of the kingdom of God, we should not embrace it. We have to stand distinct, lift up the kingdom of light, and at least so that we could be a, 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 a place of hope for people, even in this dark time, who are seeking to find some way out. Okay, um, <coughs> Uzi Michelle is asking, what they, or oh, statement actually, what they perceive as right or good where culture is concerned? It's meant to be a question. What, what they or what, what do you perceive to be as, I'm not sure if it's meant to be a question or comment, but um, the Bible, I, I, I can respond if it's a question. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if, if, if any of the panelists would like to share. But right and wrong, that, that, and I think the panelists have been making that point, right or wrong for the Christian is determined not by culture. It's determined by the standard of the, the Bible, you see? So, so that's why we were talking about a higher culture. So what is done in Grenada, what is done wherever, um, whichever part of the, the Caribbean, whichever part of the world, is not determining what 
the government or the people there are saying is right or wrong. The Christian, the higher culture for the Christian um, comes from the word of God. That, that's where we get our direction from. So um, I, I hope that... Yeah, that ab absolutely, clarifies. Mr. Moderator. And I may add, one cannot justify an act on the basis of culture. In other words, I cannot say, Pastor Enoch Isaac, you ought to do X, Y, and Z, man, because it's our culture. Yeah. I'm saying that in itself is not sufficient justification if you are speaking to somebody who is a Christian. The fact that it is a norm within the culture doesn't mean that it has to be embraced by the Christian because it's not all the norms in a particular culture that are wholesome or biblically compatible. Some, we definitely have to decry them. We have to speak out against them. But the ones that are okay, it's fine. I mean, there are some cultural practices that are good. And as Christians, we embrace them and we display our, our Grenadian culture, uh, we say the, um, what, the, the um, hail, grenade, the uh, national yeah, anthem, anthem, whatever. It's fine. But to the extent that the practice is not fine um, in terms of incompatibility with the scripture, you cannot use culture as the justification for that because you're a Christian. Okay, it's a wonderful note to, to pause and take a break. So at this time, we'll, we'll entertain you with a beautiful special music we'll, which will be coming from the sisters from the Grand Roy Church. So we'll have a, we'll have a break um, from the panel as we enjoy beautiful singing from the sisters. too big to solve. Stop looking to man. Start looking to God. Cause I know for certain Thank you. 
bones carry you through. Just call on the master Ooh. and watch what he'll do for you. Now the mountains, the mountains, the mountains. Welcome back. We, we, that was a beautiful rendition of special music from the sisters. Pastor Pancho, these are your people from the Grand Royal Church. I saw Amen. another sister, Hamilton, and the others from Grand Royal just picking up the group. Wonderful voices, wonderful blend. Yeah, um, you know, it's just beautiful. Keep singing, keep singing, sisters. Keep singing for, for, for Jesus. Uh, just before we get back to our substantive to our, to our topic, culture and Christian, just sticking a note here. For persons who are looking for good books to buy, the ad per bookstores have, have indicated that they have sales going on right now. 25% on all HUI books. Um, actually, it was up to July 30th, but we just told that it has been extended while stocks last. So you, you're still interested in getting um, good books for, for the kids during this vacation time so they can read something? Um, you can please contact the, uh, any one of the stores here at Grenville. You can contact Brother Jeremy at 442-8091. Or if you choose to, if you're close to St. George's or you want to call St. George's, it's 440-2458. You can contact Sister um, Kenya there. So, so you're interested in any one of the, the books from the book center, any of the Spirit of Prophecy books or any book, please contact them they have a special sales going on 25 percent and in th these days every dollar counts so you can um contact the bookstore um to get your your supply so we're moving on with the our questions so far we have been having a de delightful time here in the studio with pastor panchu and pastor gordon as we look at um culture and the christian lots of comments coming from our um viewers um expressing um one way or the other and i think in large part understanding the issue of culture and the issue of the, the Christians. Uh, so I think our viewers in large part have been agreeing with our panelists about um, the nature of it. So we <coughs> let's move on to uh, question number five. Quite an interesting question here, gentlemen. What are the basis for accepting some cultural practices while at the same time rejecting others? What, what is the basis for that? And an example is given. For example... Christians in Grenada embrace the independent celebration, but they denounce the carnival activities. So, um, you know, where, where does Christians get this right from? Celebration, the songs for independence, and everything that goes along with independence, we can accept that. Carnival, no. What's the basis for accepting and rejecting some? Accepting some and rejecting others. Um, well, as we established... Um, ultimately, our values are based upon the does said the Lord, the word of God itself, the Bible. And so every decision that is made is, made is made based on that fact. Whatever is good, whatever is holy, um, what is of a good report, you know, the Bible says think on these things. And so as we establish, not all aspect of culture is bad. And so as a Christian, prayerfully, one, one makes a decision as what to support or what culturally might be wholesome, he must be given guidance through the word of God, and even as the Holy Spirit impressed upon them, be guided in making a decision that will please heaven. Now, I was looking at some of the responses, and of course, um, I think some of the things that will help guide um, the Christian, if you go back to the letters of Paul to the Corinthians, you will get a, a, a great idea as how Paul dealt with the cultural aspects of things. And of course, Paul said, yeah, become everything to all men um, in order to win them. And many people sometimes, you know, they, they get misled by the thought that Paul is saying that you have to compromise. But Paul is not saying that you have to compromise. 
Paul is saying that you have to understand that everybody is different. Everybody is coming from a different cultural background. And in order to help them, you must understand the background that they're coming from. So for example, I'll, gi I'll give an example that you know, I think is common. There are certain places that where we have been doing missionary work. And we would have entered the church, and one of our team members is a good drummer. So the first question he asked entering the church is, where are the drums? And one of the persons in the church turned around to him, and they said, don't bring your devil music here. Because in their minds, the use of drums in church um, is really of the devil. That may not be so. And uh, that is not a primary discussion, but I just want to use the example just to show you how culture sometimes impacts how we see worship and how we see things that we accept and things that are rejected. But in the case like, for example, Independence versus Carnival and the revelry of Carnival, in Independence, one could still the wholesome part of it. We're celebrating our, our, our independence in terms of our ability to govern ourselves. There is nothing fundamentally wrong with that. But the revelry of carnival definitely goes against the culture of heaven. The nakedness, the vulgarity, the exposure of body and body parts, you know, those things are the things that the Bible does not support. And so we know what to choose based on the values that are held within the particular things that are practiced. If it pleases God, then there's no reason that a Christian cannot support it. But if it displeases God, then we have to reject it as strongly as the Bible rejects it. Okay, wonderful. Pastor God, you want to add yes, something? Absolutely. I, I concur um, totally with um, the, the, the points that were so beautifully articulated by my colleague panelist. And the, the, the question is, should the Christian have a tool that um, he or she uses to distinguish between that which is acceptable and that which is non-acceptable, that which is excusable and that which is not? And the, um, the answer is yes. And then the next question is then what should that tool be? And as the pastor pointed out, it has to be inspiration. It has to be that which has been revealed to us in the written word, uh, God's encoded will in the, in, the, in the canon, the sacred canon. That's our guide. And so on the basis of that, we can embrace independence and we can embrace our, um, our cuisine. I, I'm still learning how to make oil down. I, I'm, I've tried and failed a number of times. I have may mercy. have to have these men teach me. Um, uh, but I, those things are beautiful. They're awesome. But the, the other things that are, are not, we, we definitely cannot embrace them on the basis as Pastor pointed out that they are incongruous to the things of the spirit. And we are a kingdom people. It was said earlier that we live in this world, but we represent the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors. Um, you know, there's a little place down in Lansapin, the American Embassy. And even though they're in Grenada, yet that little, the land, the, the compound is a piece of America in Grenada. Similarly, for us Christians, the Christian church, we are the embassy of heaven. May I say behind enemy lines? But we represent God. So we are in the culture, but truly we represent a different culture, different values, and a different vision of what is to come later on. Wonderful. Um, Spiju Alexis says the, fun the fundamental foundation of carnival is pagan, meaning devil worship. Independence is not. Um, so, so I think she's agreeing with you. Um, Agree with you, Pastor Panchu, relative to the statement. Not, not well, both of you. Not, not because something is 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 um is is cultural. It's good. You can have bad elements of culture. Yes. Um. And as you rightly state. Um. In fact, in fact, as we listen to carnival, sometimes even the organizers um talk about the nakedness and asking persons not to be naked. But I suppose it, the very nature of these um, activities cause this person to, to display that aspect of them, you see? So, um, yes, so we have, to be, we have to be careful. We have to be very careful as relates to um, what, we, what we accept. And, and I think what the pastors or panelists are trying to stress here is not how we feel. It's essentially, a, a, it should be a Bible-based decision. A Bible-based decision, because you see, if it's based on feeling, this morning you feel that way. 
The next morning, you'll feel a different way. This year, you'll feel that way. Next year, you have a totally different feeling as to that same, that same activity. Um, and it could be a seesaw, up and down. You know, um, but it can't be that when it comes to values. It can't be that. It has to be something more solid. And that solid um, thing would be the word of God. It gives you a clear guidance. It doesn't matter what year, what century, what decade. It will never change because principles never change. People do, but principles remain. So if, it's wrong, if it was wrong 10 years ago, it will be wrong today. If it was ethical 10 years ago, it will be et unethical because um, principles does not change. But, but Mr. Moderator, before you run on, you just said something very beautiful that I think I, I need to accentuate a little bit. Um, certain things are eternal. Certain values are not dependent on culture or time. Right? I have actually been in meetings with Christians who were trying to persuade the audience that we must accept gay marriages and we must accept in the, in the Christian churches representative of the LGBTQ community because they desire, they, I mean, they must be treated with love and so on. And, um, and so it, it goes now, because we have an international audience, it goes beyond independence and carnival for the Christian. It now takes in all the other cultural, globally cultural um, things that are now being thrust upon us. How should we respond as Christians? And I think it's the same principle that follows through, the same eternal, the same perennial principles that we must remain true to the word of God. I agree we must love, we must be all-embracing, but only to the extent that in doing so, we don't compromise that which pleases the Lord Jesus. And I think beautifully said, um, as, we, as our time comes down, um, every, there's a statement here. Um, you, you'll share your sentiments in it. Every cultural context is structurally good. Every cultural context is structurally good, but directionally corrupt. Do you share these sentiments? Um, okay. Please come in. You know, um, I mean, we, we, we can focus on the word every cultural, or, or maybe not focus on that word every, but cultural context is structurally good, but directionally corrupt. Do you? Do you? Well, I think um, one of the things one must understand um, when it comes to culture is that Ill, each culture is, is self-preserving. And so even if not necessarily a Christian culture, but it's self-preserving. It's about multiplication, increasing of the population, providing for food, providing for shelter, and providing for the future. So that's just a basic element of all cultures, whether they are Christian or not. It's self-preserving. But in the essence of the Christian culture, as it relates even into our context here, I think one of the first examples that goes to my mind is Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Because one may not may quickly you know, accept it, but the fact is, that everything Jesus did with the encounter with that woman was countercultural. Firstly, within the context of, of, of that uh, Jewish community, a man should not talk to a woman publicly in that regard. So whether it's your wife or not, you don't engage in, in a public conversation with them. And here Jesus meets this Samaritan woman and is having, a, having an open conversation. Secondly, she's not a Jew. Well, I mean, historically she's half a Jew. But the, but the Jews and the Samaritan don't get along. So if a Jew is coming and he sees a Samaritan, he will not come to that well. Or similarly, Samaritan will not come to that well. And here is Jesus breaking all of these norms. But the reason why he's doing it is to win a soul. And the Bible is so, I mean, it's so wonderful in his writing because it says the reason why they don't accept men talking with women publicly is because it may lead to gossiping. So here we can see that the cultural meaning is not bad. Because you don't want people seeing you talking here with this woman here or that woman. They're going to gossip. So to prevent the gossiping, they say, hey, no, we don't want men talking with women publicly. But Jesus said, no, there is a soul to be saved. And so he, he went counterculture. He said, listen, it's more important to save this woman than to worry about people gossiping. And that's why when he spoke to her and he offered himself to her in that salvation to her, she was able to go and get more people and say, come see a man. Because I've never met a man like this Jesus. And I believe that when it comes to culture, similarly, we have to understand again what is of worth because culture will basically, you know, self try to preserve itself. 
But as Christians, we represent the kingdom of light. And we have to know where we could inject ourselves and do so wholesomely so that we could win a soul. So in, in, in that context, I believe that even though culture might have its limits in terms of what might be acceptable or not, we have an even greater, as we say, a higher culture, and that is our desire to save souls. And so we have to find opportunities to be able to reach people within the context of culture itself. Okay, Pastor Gordon, your response? Uh, it's it's um, very interesting. There is a very interesting comment um, that... Um, Corella? Yes, uh, I, I think... I don't know if you want to take it. Uh, my response is similar to pastors, so I could forego my response um, if you want to take the question. Okay, well, there, okay, sure. We know that there is clear distinction between the worldly practices and the, and the Christian way of life, regardless of the culture across the board. However, as, as Christianity was introduced to us, as people of African descent, it has been brought from a total... Eurocentric. Eurocentric flavor to the extent of, of excluding Afrocentricity, even making it seem ungodly. Is there something wrong with this? And how can we as Christians reconcile this? Well, um, is <laughs> <laughs> you want to comment, Pastor? I, th I thought it very interesting. Um, I, and I, I have heard this argument being branded about here and there. Um, it, it is also a feature of Rastafarianism, you know, a kind of rejection of um, um, anything that is Eurocentric in nature. Um, but, you know, I, I think <coughs> as Christians, we ought to exercise the two and a half pound of um, electrochemical computer God has given to us called the brain. We have, we have been given a Bible and a brain, right? And we must use them both for God's glory. And um, the fact that something has come to us wrapped in the culture of the, the proponents or the messengers um, it doesn't in any way um, derogate from the beauty and truthfulness of that which has come to us. And um, we have to learn to unpack, um, open the package. Don't get stuck to the, the wrappings, but deal with the gift that is inside. So Eurocentricity was the context within which the gospel was brought to us, people of African descent. It would be wrong for us to think that the package in itself is, 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 is good, but it's just like... Christianity has come to us within the context of, of the Judeo theocracy. But we don't take off our shoes to go in the temple. We don't practice certain things of the Judean theocracy. We take that which is good. As somebody said, oh, my, my vegan folks don't condemn me. You eat the fish and leave the bone. But let's not con <laughs> let, let, Let's deal okay. with that which is essential. Okay, so e e essentially, um, you're saying that, and I agree, that something's not necessarily wrong. Where the, the, the European, they brought it to us and um, they brought certain, the songs that we sing in a particular way, that's the music. Now we can, we can sing some of the same songs, we can contemporize them and sing some of the same songs. So I would, yes, I wouldn't say something is necessarily wrong with that. They brought it, that was their culture, they brought it. Now we have, as Pastor says, we have to um, understand it and, 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 and see what is good and how best it is fitted in our, our situation. Well, we, we're almost out of time, but um, um, you know, what does Ellen White have to say in regards to Christian and culture? Do you have a quote that you want to share, Ellen White? Um, testimonies um, to Ministers, um, page 213. And she was making direct reference to culture as it relates um, to understanding that people have very unique characteristics wherever you go throughout the world. And God expects us to understand, firstly, how these people think, how they react, how they, you know, what are the value system and the norms. And I guess we, I could piggyback on the same responses that you all gave. That even though we talk about the um, Eurocentric part of Christianity, one cannot ignore the African part because it came from, fr from the African continent. So it's not a European religion. And similarly, G um, Sister White is simply saying that we have to understand each people group. So in order to win them, we must understand them. And we don't just go to push Christianity down the throat, but understand how they see life. What is their worldview? And once we understand that, we'll be more effective in our evangelism, and in reaching them um, for Christ. So that quote is essentially referencing the importance of understanding people's culture. culture. 
yes, understand it, to effectively um, um, harness, to effectively reach others, we must first seek to understand them. I think that's the basic. Pastor God, you? Yeah, you absolutely. And um, we must learn how to distinguish between a preference and a principle. There might be a kind of desire, proclivity towards one own culture, but then one has to extract the principle being presented. So um, Afrocentricity and um, Eurocentricity are just like um, preferences, behavioral preferences. But the truth is, what are the principles, the biblical crystal principles that have come to us? We need, as God's people, to focus on those and leave the other things out of it. Wonderful. And before we close off, the, you know, the, uh, just like to share one passage of scripture, well-known, very um, well-known passage of scripture, um, Ephesians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report, if there be any virtue or if there be any praise, think on these things. Um, we are delighted this morning, Pastor Gordon, Pastor Pancho, I think um, your responses were very educational to all our viewers and listeners. And um, thank you so much, all those of you who are on, um, who shared your comments. We saw them. We weren't able to read all of them, of, I mean, several of them. But you, I think you fully understood the topic, the, the culture and the Christian. We're leaving you with the understanding, with the knowledge that there's a higher culture than the culture that you know. That is a Christian culture. That is a Jesus culture. And once you line up with Jesus, once you get hook up with Jesus, that is the culture that supersedes all other culture. Thank you so kindly. Remember, we have a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. Um, and again, see you next Tuesday, God's will, as we continue another Pastor's Corner. Let's have a word of prayer as we close up. Pastor Gordon, could you prefer us? Our gracious Father, you're such an awesome God. We're happy that you are our God. As we like to say, the universe is blessed to have a God like you. We thank you for being with us during our discussion. We thank you for our viewers and listeners. We thank you for the time we have spent and the blessing that it has been to us and indeed to our listeners and viewers. We ask now that as we end this program, that your sweet spirit will not end his ministry to our hearts, but that we will be strengthened and fortified and assisted as we fight the battles of life. Bless us and keep us safe in these pandemic times. We humbly pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.